So the next thing we're going to do is set up some workspaces. And you can see initially I've got a layout workspace only. And rather than mess this one up, I'm going to right click it and choose duplicate. That will create this workspace. I'll just double click that and I'll name this to uh, lighting. And what I'll do now is just drag this. If you look at the bottom right hand corner, the cursor turns into a crosshair. If I drag that to the left, that will create a new window. And I'm going to change this to a shader editor. And I'm going to set this to be a world editor. And if I just drag this or press N on the keyboard, that will hide that little panel. N will bring it back. What I'm going to do is set up a world shader. So I want to set up a HDRI. So I'll click on New. And this will give us this view here. Let's just bring that across a little bit. Okay, so we've got the world shader in there. But if I go to Rendered View, and I'm just going to change this to Eevee. So I'm in the Render tab there. Change that to Eevee. And if I click on here, you can see we're just getting the normal view. So we've only got a grey background. What we need to do is add a world environment. So Shift A, and then we'll search by pressing S. And then I'll type in environment so we get environment texture and I'll just add that okay and then I'll choose open and then I'll go into my 3d assets choose HDRIs if we can find them uh, HDRI at the bottom and I'm going to choose beach parking so I'll just type in beach in fact there it is 4k I don't need it to be high resolution because we're not actually going to see this. So if I click on beach parking, I'll choose to open that. And then you can see straight away, we've got this beach parking image. And we're only really interested in the sky. We're going to see that coming through the water. So I'll press Control T on here. And that will give us a texture coordinate and a mapping coordinate. And that will just allow us to rotate it around if we need to. Now what we'll do is we'll create the sand. So back to the layout tab, shift A and we'll add a plane. And I'll just make this a little bit bigger. So maybe say 50 by 50. So I'll just in this box here, put 50. So we've got the plane set up. There's not enough geometry in order to give this any shape. So we'll go into the modifiers and we'll add a subdivision surface. We'll give it maybe six iterations. We'll make it simple because we don't want it to be round. Okay, and I will apply this, so Control a while my mouse hovered over there. And if I look at the mesh now, you can see we've got lots of uh, subdivisions on there. Okay, so let's add a displacement modifier. And we're going to add a new texture. Click on this little icon to go to the textures panel, or alternatively, we can just click here. So I'll click up here. And we need to give this a texture, so I'm going to give it a cloud texture and F3 and then choose smooth, shade smooth. And I want to make this texture a bit bigger. So somewhere about there, give us the shape of the sand. All right, and I'll apply that. So to here, control A, with a mouse hovered over there. That will apply it. And now I'm gonna add a second displacement. And click on new, back into textures. Again, we'll go with the clouds. And this time, I'm going to make it a bit bigger. So maybe make it four. And just go back into the modifier and increase the strength so we can see a bit more easily what's happening. And then back into the texture again. And maybe increase this even more. So maybe eight, 12. So that's looking pretty good. And I'll apply this. And now what I want to do is go into the sculpt mode and I'll make sure I've got bulge selected and I'll just have my mouse. In fact, let's go with draw or grab. Let's grab. Go with grab. And then what we can do is just pull that up and we can make that larger, the brush size, by pressing F and then moving the radius like so. I'm just going to give it a bit more... Um, a few more large areas so that it's blocking off the camera as it goes into the distance. Something like that, maybe bring those down. Uh, 
So we just want to get something interesting for the camera. So it looks pretty good. And I go back into object mode. Okay, so we've got the sand model. What we need to do now is give it a texture. So just make sure we've got Eevee selected still. And we'll add a new work uh, workspace at the top. So we'll right click on layout and choose duplicate. And then double click this and I'm going to rename this to shaders. And I'm going to drag across like so. And change this into a shader editor. Just press N to hide this panel. And then I need to give this a material. So I'm going to click on new at the top. And this will give us a principal shader. I'm just going to click on the... Uh, render view at the top here and let's hide this background so we we'll click on this little drop down and turn off scene world okay so you can see it's bright white at the moment and we're getting all these strange little artifacts but if we zoom in they start to disappear I'm going to turn off the overlays I'm going to get rid of all this here that we don't need so first thing then we need to give it a basic sand color so let's go with Shift A, S, and Mix RGB. I'm going to choose two sand colors. So one's going to be the normal color, and then one's going to be a little bit darker, just so we can get a little bit of variation. So something like that. And then I'll Control C with my mouse hovered over the top color, and then hover my mouse over the bottom one, Control V, and then click on it, and just make it a little bit darker, like so. And then we'll plug this into the base color, there you go. A bit too glossy at the moment, but we'll come to that later. So what I want to do is use this mix node to add variations in the color. All right, to do that, Shift A, S, noise, and choose noise texture, not white noise. And then we'll plug this into the factor. Okay, and then if we scale this, we can start to see we're getting little color variations in the sand. I'm not going to use UVs for this because I quite like the effect that this is having on the terrain. So that's pretty good. And what I'll do now is I need to add the sand grains. So Shift A, S, we'll use another noise. And this time, oh, not white noise. Shift A, S, noise, noise texture. And I'm going to plug this into the roughness. So. Let's grab that, plug that into the roughness. And then as I scale that, give it a second to load, you can see we're getting variations in roughness. So I don't want it to be black and white output as we get in here. So if I just control shift click on this, you'll see this is the output we're getting from the factor. And because it's plugged into the roughness, the black areas or the dark areas will be glossy and the white areas will be rough. But obviously we don't want sand to be shiny in any place so shift a s and then we'll use a uh, let's go with a ramp plug this in here and instead of having black i'm going to click on this and i'm going to change this to be more of a whitish color and you can see as i do that it gets rougher and less glossy all right and i'm going to bring those closer together so we've got more distinction between the two or a sharper sort of edge not too sharp but something like that it's still a bit too glossy so i'm going to bring this down even more up rather even more to white somewhere about there just so we're getting that little bit of glossiness and what i'm going to do now is make this much smaller so if i increase the scale then we're going to get something like this but you can see at this point we do actually need to get uvs because it's, it's sort of uh, it's not following the terrain correctly. So I'm going to do Shift A, S, uh, Texture Coordinate. And I'm going to drop this into the object output into the vector. Give that a second. And let's just bring that back down. So you can see now it's, follow it's, it's more sort of um, correctly UV'd onto the object just zoom out you can see that but obviously these sand grains are way too big 
So I'm going to increase the scale. Something about, that's probably still a bit too big. But for now, I'll leave it at that because we'll set it up properly when we get the camera where we want it. Okay. Let's do that now. Just find a nice spot. Probably somewhere like this. But what I'll do now is I'll add a camera. So Shift A. And then camera. Let's turn on the overlays. And I want to align the camera to the view. So if I press F3 and then choose camera view, you can see at the bottom we've got align active camera to view. So if I click on this, what's supposed to happen is it will align the camera to the view that I've got it in, in uh, now. If I click on it, you'll see it doesn't really do that. I don't know why. Uh, I think it's something to do with the field of view, but I'm not sure. So we'll press N and then we'll go into view. And then we need to lock the camera to the view so that when we move the viewport, it will actually move the camera as well. So click on that and then hide that. And let's bring this back now to where we were before. I don't know, somewhere around about there perhaps. I think the field of view is not good enough, so we'll click on the camera icon with the camera still selected. And we'll change the focal length so that it's a bit of a wider angle. So I'll bring this down to something like 35. Somewhere around there. Just set it up as it looks good to you. All right, and we can see now the sand grain is gonna be way too big. So let's click on this again, to direct this uh, material back up. I'm gonna scale this even more. And then I'm going to add a bump node, so Shift A, S, bump. And I'm going to plug the output of this noise texture into the strength. And we need to make sure we don't use this one. So if we use this one, there will be hardly any bump because it's nearly all white. And a bump texture needs to be black and white. So the, the white areas get uh, more height and the black areas don't. All right, so... Let's plug this into the normal. Give it a second to calculate. And need to put that into the height, not the strength. All right, and then you can see we're getting a bump effect. And just to um, make it a bit easier to see what we're doing, I'm going to hide the areas outside of the camera. So I go back into the camera, click on the camera into the settings, and then under I think it's a viewport display, we've got pass a part out. Just turn that all the way up, and then all we can see now is the area that we're actually going to see in the render. All right, click on the sand again. And the strength's too high, it's actually affecting the shading and giving us a few artifacts. So if we bring that down, somewhere about there, looks pretty good. Maybe make that scale a bit higher like that. So the top one is the general color discoloration. So shift P with those selected and I'm going to click N to bring up the panel and change this to be the uh, color variation. And then these ones, well this one here, these two rather, shift P and these are going to be the sand grain And the last thing I'm going to add is a sort of a swirly texture to the sand. So we're going to add another noise texture. So Shift A, and then noise, noise texture, not white noise. Plug that in there, or drop it there rather. And I want to add the noise texture here to the sand grain. So it also adds to the bump. And just to see what we're doing, I'm going to press Control and Shift on the keyboard left click on the noise texture so we're isolating that in the viewport and I'm going to change the scale 
and then I'm going to change the distortion. Actually, before we continue with that, I'm going to plug in the object output of the texture coordinate into the vector. And that'll just make sure it, it properly maps onto the sort of the raised areas. Okay, so we'll bring the scale down a bit. Somewhere like that looks pretty good. And what I'm going to do now is add it to the sand grain. So Shift A, S, Math, and plug that into the height. And I keep it as Add because I want to add these two together. And I'm going to plug that into the bottom. And then if I Control Shift click on the principled, that'll put this back as the active uh, node. Give it a second to compile. All right. And we can't really see much of that effect. So what I'm going to do is before we go into the add, I'm going to multiply that. So Shift A, S, and then Math again. Plug this in between the noise texture and the add. Change this to multiply. And then just turn that up a little bit. Give it a second to finish compiling. And as we turn this up, you'll see the effect gets much stronger. Okay, so we've added those together. I'm pretty happy with that. So the next thing then is to make the ocean. 